Hey guys, Andrew Henderson, Nomad Capitalist here in Tbilisi, Georgia. Final week in Georgia. And wanted to talk a little bit about banking, banking outside of your home country. It's something that we talk about. It's a good way to diversify, a good way to set yourself up, whether it's you or your company. But there is one step, and there's one thing that has stopped me from banking with more banks than anything else. And you might be surprised what, what it is. I'm going to tell you in a second. Um, but let me tell you why this issue has come up for me lately. Uh, we have our best-selling Nomad Guide ebook called The Best Offshore Banks. It's on nomadcapitalist.com, and it features lots of different banks for different situations, from U.S. citizens to tourists to any number of potential other people who want to open a bank account. And lots of people have used this and had great success. But what I want to do this year, and you'll see this coming out later in the year, is uh, I'm having my research team uh, we have a couple people doing research. Uh, I want them to figure out even more banks. Because the more I travel around the world to emerging countries like Georgia and others that I've been in the last year and that I'm going to in the next few months, I see a lot of great banks that I've had great experiences with that you won't hear about anywhere else. Not even on the forums, not the, the dreaded forums. And so I wanted to include these in the book. And there are far more than the 50 banks in there that I'd like to talk about, and they're in some pretty freaky jurisdictions sometimes, ones you might not think about. And so my team is going through, and they're contacting different banks, and I'm doing some research, and I'm helping them, and they're doing kind of the legwork and seeing what happens, and then I go to the banks and check it out and, and see what the actual user experience is. But there are a lot of banks over the years that I have disqualified for one reason, before I even set foot in their branch. Uh, before I even look at, you know, what's their financial situation or what do they do? And that is, what does their website look like? This is kind of like the restaurant with the dirty bathroom. And you're thinking, well, if the if this bathroom's kind of dirty, maybe the kitchen's kind of dirty too? Like, if, if they're showing me this, what's the, what's the back of the house look like? For me, that's a website uh, for a bank. Um, we're in the second decade of the 21st century. And the internet is not a passing fad. And if you've got a website that looks like it's 1998 and the Asian financial crisis is in full swing, um, <clears throat> I'm pressing on. And sadly, you have a number of banks in Asia that have that. Uh, you also have some banks in the Caribbean, which I'm, I'm less interested in these days. But if you've got a bad website and your website is not easy to manage, or at least relatively easy to manage, then I'm out. Because especially those of us living the nomadic capitalist lifestyle, those of us living somewhere outside of the bank's jurisdiction, we're going to be logging in from somewhere else. And we don't need hassles. We don't need problems. We don't want to be FedExing documents. We don't want to be answering calls at 3 in the morning. We, we just want the bank to work. And in my experience, the banks that have bad websites have been a problem. I, I've told you about the worst bank on planet Earth, HSBC. Go to HSBC in Hong Kong. They've made some improvements to the website. It was terrible up until a year or two ago. It looked like, I mean, it was so confusing and so difficult. More difficult than, than dogs barking in your neighborhood. Um, and they, HSBC, terrible bank. So in my experiences and in the experiences of people I've talked to, if a bank can't figure out a website, then it's not going to figure out the other things. It's kind of like when you go on a date with someone and they show up on the first date late and they're kind of obnoxious and they're playing with their phone and you're thinking to yourself, well, hey, if I just go, up, go out with them, keep going out with them second, third, fourth time, it can only improve. Well, no, they're showing you what their true colors are. They're showing you what they're like to deal with. And that's, you're going to continue to deal with that. So, yes, it's important to check a bank's financials. Yes, it's important to check all the different factors on the banks. And that's why I'm bringing on a small group of researchers to help me do that stuff with banks and with other stuff. And then I go and check it out in the real world in first person. Um, but I can't get past the hurdle of a bad website. It's merely inexcusable in this day and age. And I think it really does hide a lot of other ills. Um, just like with hiring, just like with taking on clients, just like with anything that you do in your life where you have to make a judgment call on whether this is going to be the right move for you, you have to do so with banks too. And if a bank can't get its website in order, there's lots of other things that it's not going to get an order. Now, look, it may be a stable bank. There are banks in Hong Kong in particular where their websites look like it is the 90s. And I won't deal with them because maybe they're a bit more difficult. Maybe they don't really care about websites. I mean, some of these banks in Hong Kong still want you to send them faxes. Imagine that you're somewhere living the nomadic lifestyle and you have to send your bank a fax. 
because they don't believe in websites. Forget it. So that's the number one thing that gets in my way. I'm not saying there aren't other factors, but a good website is important. And let me tell you, a lot of the emerging world banks and places that you probably wouldn't consider actually have the best websites. Here in Georgia, they have pretty good and pretty advanced payments technology all across the board because they have to. They can't rest on their laurels or else they're never, they'll never get ahead. So that's one of the reasons I like emerging market banks. That's a whole other video. But website is important. Uh, if you're looking for help opening an offshore bank account, planting those flags, uh, the best offshore banks book is on nomadcapitalist.com. And... Um, you can get that there. If you're curious about planting flags and living the nomad capitalist lifestyle in general, then uh, subscribe to our channel here on YouTube and check out all of the videos.